Hi guys, Dane here, and today I am taking you behind the scenes on a little adventure. So here in High Wycombe, where I live, there is a sort of local community radio station called Wycombe Sound. And basically, I have been asked to make a monthly appearance on a show called Planet Claire to talk about books. So I've gone along once in the past, and this footage you're going to see is from the second time I went along. It's not the entire show, but I, I took along my little Legria mini camera and filmed a little bit of a behind the scenes thing just so you could get a feel for what the show is like and what we talked about and of course I will be linking below to where you can listen to the full thing so without further ado let's go to the radio With me again, I have Dane Cobain. Hello Dane. Hi Anne, you alright? I'm okay, yes. So, so this month we decided so you're, you're going to talk about some books that you've read yes. over the last is it over the last month or so you've yeah read it's them? Pretty, pretty much since i last came in so when i when i last came in i was reading agatha christie's autobiography and i, I finished that yeah so that was good and then it's basically i guess my my top books since since then okay away you go okay well so i guess the first things that i want to speak about are the uh, the the penguin mini modern classics so mm. these are a thing from penguin they have the blue modern classics and then the black classic classics i guess you would call them and um they're the ones that they're they're a pound each i think part of it's to do with kind of world book day and that kind of thing to encourage people uh, to right. read yes. there, there may be I think they're about 60 to 70 pages long, each of them, and there's like a huge range of them. The first one in the series mm. was, uh, it was Letter from Birmingham Jail by Martin Luther King, which was actually a really good one to sort of yeah. start the series off with, because I think what's cool about these, the Penguin Mini, mini Modern Classics, is that although you know most of them are you know 60 70 plus years old at least they're actually still really relevant today so the two that i actually brought with me uh, in particular that i enjoyed one of them is by george orwell which i'm possibly biased because i really like george orwell um but it's a little little book called notes on nationalism and it's a couple of different essays in there and it's interesting because this was written in 1945 just after the end of the second world war and one of the things he's saying in it is how bad of an idea it is to have a big football match between england and russia because he's saying there's all these <laughs> diplomatic tensions and it just gives people a kind of an excuse to mm. you know to it's basically almost you know a political war on the sporting field you know but i thought that was interesting given you know world cup this year and <laughs> and various other things yes. that have been in the news as yeah. well the other one of the penguin mini moderns that i've been really enjoying is uh, uh, it's Albert Camus, and it's called Create Dangerously, and it's basically this this big essay on, you know, what it means to be a creator and how, no matter whether you're an artist or a writer or an actor or whatever it happens to be, whatever creative field you're in, you, you have to create dangerously, basically, if you're not kind of challenging things and putting yourself in a position where you're being criticised, then potentially you're not, you know, fulfilling what, what your potential is as a creator. OK, so what's next? What's next? I, well, let's go for this one. This is the one that. Um, so I, I asked whether you'd seen uh, the Princess Bride, and the I movie. Haven't. Yeah, <laughs> I don't Which think you, I you have. Which sh you should fix it. Right. It's, okay. It's such a I'll good do movie. that. It's yes. actually it's it's interesting because so this book here is called As You Wish and it's by Carrie Elwes who played uh, played Westley or the man in black in the movie basically you're going to have listeners who have seen the movie and know what I'm talking about and people who yes. have no idea what yeah. I'm talking about but basically he wrote this it's kind of a memoir of his time filming but it's, it's actually really interesting because of kind of what went into the film. So, for example, there's a big sword fight in the film that's in the screenplay is just described as the greatest sword fight of modern times. So it goes into this book how they trained for it. They had to train to fight both right-handed and left-handed. They didn't use any stunt doubles throughout. Right. And it was to a point where I think they had four months of pretty much nine-to-five training. Yes. Then they started shooting the movie. And even while they were shooting the movie, they were still having training cool. things between, you yeah. know, between the different scenes as well. Another one? Yes, please. Yes. Well, I'll mention briefly because I mentioned last time I was in Agatha Christie's autobiography, yes. which, and I was, and I was saying to you, it's probably not, it's not like a general purpose reading book. I don't think. I think if you're a real fan of Agatha Christie, then you'd want to read it. But it was, you know, it was about 580 pages long with tiny print and going. Ooh, it didn't yes. it, as well. It didn't really go into her writing career. So yeah. it was actually a really interesting study of. 
you know, the, the you know the social mores of the time, really. And actually, because she lived from about, I, I don't know the dates entirely off the top of my head, but it's about 1890 to 1970, something like that. So obviously, in the span of her lifetime, she saw two world wars right, and yes. all of these she... sort of sweeping changes. So, for example, you know, during the 1960s, when, yes. you, you know, there were all kinds of sort of social revolutions going on. So it was interesting to see, see all of that, really. But what was also sad is she never really thought of herself as a writer. She, she thought of herself as a housewife first and then as a writer ah, dis- despite that's the fact interesting, yes. I, I think it's the stat is that she sold more books I think it's only kind of the bible I think maybe is out really? sold her or, <laughs> yes. um, she, I think she's yeah. one of the most but you know best selling fiction authors of all time and yeah she saw herself as a housewife and it's it was kind of sad to read that yeah you know? and so and I can see that interesting this, this cover, one. that one that makes my eyes go a bit funny. So this, yes. this is a book called Wolf in White Van by John Darnell. So he's, uh, he's a songwriter primarily, so he's, the, he's kind of the creative force or whatever behind a band called The Mountain Goats. Yep. And um, it, actually his bio here, it says uh, he is widely considered to be one of the best lyricists of his generation, which is definitely true amongst Mountain Goats fans. I don't know, I don't know how many people in you know, the wider music industry or whatever have, have heard him. Um, but this book's... It was very strange. I, I was saying to you before we went on air that it's like... You can kind of tell that it's been written by a musician as opposed to, you know, a novelist who's written, say, yes. 20 books or something. But actually that gives it kind of this, this sense of creative freedom. In terms of what it's about, I, I was trying to give it a genre when I reviewed it on, on my book blog. And the best I can think of is it's, it's kind of literary fiction, which is, I think, the cop-out genre that people use when they can't think of a better one <laughs> for it. But basically, <laughs> yes. it follows this guy who's created... The best way to describe it is like mail order Dungeons and Dragons or like one of those old choose your own adventure books. Right. So you would write in and uh, he would send you, you know, the first move and then you choose, you know, do I go across the desert or do I drive east towards the coast or whatever? And then you send him your move with a stamped address envelope and then you get the next part of it back. And this book basically follows this character who's created this this choose your own adventure thing but at the same time he's also got uh, he's got like a facial deformity and it's kind of revealed in the book how that came about so i can't really can't really say but um that kind of adds an extra edge to it as well because it's basically just follows this one guy as he sits in his room and he lives out this game called Trace Italian. You're listening to Planet Claire on Wickham Sound and with me is Dane Cobain. So you, you're you reading Rebecca? Dan yes. Yes. Yeah. So you're nearly at the end of it. I'm about... I'm about 70 pages away from the end, Right. Yes. Now, I was saying I've read it, but I think I've forgotten it. <laughs> so, I mean, I've read it, I've seen the film, I've seen a stage play of it as well, and I know they all sort of vary slightly, but I've re- I know I enjoyed the book, and she was quite a sort of a different character to how she is in the film. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, yes. the, the film and the book have yeah. slightly different endings. Right, um, yes. I, I was saying to you earlier, though, <laughs> so I'm, I've been kind of spoiled quite a lot with this book, so it, not only do I kind of know a lot of just pop culture references and yes. parodies and all that kind of thing, yes. um, but also there's there's an introductory essay in, in, my, in my edition, which... I thought, oh, I'll read that. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, no, it tells you exactly what happens, including you know the main the main plot points in it. So, um, and it's not a short <laughs> book helpful. as well. So, yes. so I'm kind of like, well, I know what happens now. Yes. So, um, yeah, weirdly, actually, quite a few of the spoilers that I know from this are because of um, Mitchell and Webb, the, the comedy <laughs> duo, because they have a ske- they have a sketch where they do. They do Rebecca, but in reverse. So the first wife is haunted right. by the second wife. Yes. So he's like, oh, well, no, that's where my future wife will be. But because of some of the things they have in that scene, I was then able to, you know, to figure out what was going to happen in the actual book. So Now, isn't it amazing how things like that can happen? And, and people say that television is a, a waste of time and you shouldn't watch it and you don't learn Well, we shouldn't watch it, it. We sh- because it yes. spoils books. Oh, <laughs> yes. Do you kind of... You combine reading very modern books with classics, or is it just whatever appeals to you? Yeah, I I just sort of read whatever appeals to me. So most of my books I get from charity shops, actually. So the the, uh, Penguin Mini Moderns I mentioned, actually, I I got the box set for that, and that's probably... The only oh no I've ordered one other book this year like brand new. Right. Yes. Um, the rest of them tend to be charity shops. So that's how I've been working through Agatha Christie, for example, because they're always in charity shops. Yeah. Uh, Stephen King's another great one. If you if you like Stephen King, you can find pretty much all of his books if you just keep going in charity shops. So, um, but yeah, I mean, uh, there, 
I tend to be the kind of reader where if I find an author I like, I want to read everything that that author's done. So, again, Agatha Christie and Stephen King, between them, that's probably about 300 books between the two of them. <laughs> so that's, yes. me, that's me good for quite a long time, you know. Yes. But it's strange because a lot of my friends and people in... Because we talked last time about the booktube community and, yes. uh, you know, yes. fellow book bloggers... They're all really excited about these new releases and, you know, and everyone's kind of counting down the days till launch day. And, uh, yeah, I don't do that. <laughs> Even if there is a new release that sounds really good to me, I'll generally, again, I'll wait until people have bought it and donated it to a charity shop. So what's next? What are you reading next? Um, OK, well, after this, actually, I have got an indie book. It's a, it's a guy called Ben Sanders, and he's a, bu- he's a booktuber. We actually, well, he's an author tuber, so he yes. does a bit of both. Um, but he's got a book called Robert Michael's Demon in the Trees. I would tell you what it's about. I have no idea. I literally got it because I thought he's a nice guy and yes. he's got a book, so I'll check that and out. And that's an interesting title. Yes. So promising. I think um, I know he is an, he's an American and he's, he's yeah. a Navy veteran, so I don't know whether... I think it's an action book that's got, you know, those kind of vibes to it. Right. Um, and I've heard a lot, of, a lot of people recommend that one. And then I have actually kind of got my, my reading planned <laughs> quite a bit, so <laughs> yes. soon, soon I'm going to be... Um, Basically, I put it out to a bunch of people who follow my YouTube channel. Um, we, we talked about something called Buddy Reads, where you read a book at the same time as somebody else. So actually, I'm doing that with Rebecca. Right. I'm reading that with about three or four other people. None of them called Rebecca, unfortunately. That would be great. But, <laughs> but um, yeah, so I, I kind of put out this shout saying, here are sort of ten books that I want to buddy read. And loads of people came back to me. So now I'm basically reading those ten books. How, how does that work weeks. with everyone reading at different speeds? We have an email chain and we basically say don't share any spoilers until right. we know we've all finished. Yeah. Some people do it differently, though. Some people will do, say, five chapters and then they'll stop and everyone will discuss it. But I hate doing that because it takes so long. So, I mean, R- Rebecca, I've been, I've been reading this maybe three days or something like that. Yeah. But there are people who take maybe two weeks to read it. And yes, I'd, quite. I'd, <laughs> and I'd get really yes. frustrated having to keep putting it down. So... Um, Yes. So, but yeah, I mean, pe- different people do it differently. But so for that, the next one is the the book thief by Marcus Zusak, which all I really know about that it's narrated by death and it's set during the Second World War, possibly in a concentration camp, but I'm not sure. It's one of those ones that everyone yeah. says a lot of people have it as their favourite book of all time, and it's very very sad. So I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> Yes. OK, so I know you were looking on your phone to see if you'd got any poems suitable. Yes. Did you Did you find any? I, yeah, i got one or two I can do, yeah. OK, do you want to do them now? Or do yeah, you want I to could do some, one now. I could um, play some music if you'd prefer first, or would you like to do it now? I'll, I'll do one <laughs> it's now. Why up not? To you. OK. So uh, this is called Like a Landlocked Lighthouse, and it's yes. basically... Well, it's, it's kind of about me because I spend way too much time behind a computer screen. The one thing in this, I, I don't need to remember not to swear, but I do need to change my age because it says oh. it's got my age like right. when I wrote the poem. Yes. And that's no longer my age. So anyway, my friends live their lives online and so do I. And sometimes I agree to see them to see if they're real and not just pictures on Flickr or Instagram. Mom said I'd grow up and I'd change the way we communicate, but maybe she's crazy. I'm 28 years old and I spend my life in front of computer screens reading Wikipedia because it's easier than dealing with people. Some people live their lives like a staging site. They're afraid to get stuck in, so they stand out. You know the type with their undead eyes, so stubborn like a landlocked lighthouse. Time to get out from behind the screen and start living. Now you have an aphorism to live by. Oh, that was very good. Yes, Thank you. there's a lot of people live like that yes. these days. Yes, and many older than twenty-eight. Yes, yes, yes. like well, me, for instance. That's yes, my, my futures to look forward to as well. So. Oh, really? <laughs> Great, thanks for coming in. No, thank you Uh, for having me. Right, so I'll see you again soon. So that's Dane Cobain. So there you have it. Hopefully you enjoyed that little behind-the-scenes thing. Like I said, it's going to be a monthly thing where I go along and discuss some of my favourite books since the previous month's show. I will kind of tweet about it and stuff, so obviously make sure you're following me on Twitter for that. And uh, give give Wickham Sound a follow while you're at it. The great thing is, obviously, you can catch up online. You can listen to it live from anywhere in the world. And, uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. So, anyway, on that note, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.